Welcome to the Ohio Real Estate Practice Exam. This test has 60 questions that will help you prepare for your state exam. Question 1. How much time is given to pass the Ohio Salesperson Exam? A. 2 hours. B. 3 hours. C. 4 hours. D. 5 hours. The correct answer is B. 3 hours. Candidates will be given 180 minutes or 3 hours. Total includes state and national portion to complete the examination. Question 2. How many continuing education hours are required? A. 15 hours. B. 30 hours. C. 24 hours. D. 18 hours. The correct answer is B. 30 hours. The 30 hours must include 9 hours in 3 separate mandatory core courses. Canons of Ethics, Core Law, Agency, and Civil Rights. Question 3. In order to obtain a Ohio real estate license, you must have a high school diploma. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is A. True. You must have a high school diploma or equivalent. Question 4. How often must you renew your sales agent license? A. Every year. B. Every two years. C. Every three years. D. Every four years. The correct answer is C. Every three years. As a real estate sales agent, you must renew your license every two years. A renewal notice will be sent out about 90 days before your expiration date. Question 5. How old do you have to be in Ohio to obtain a real estate license? A. 25 years old. B. 21 years old. C. 20 years old. D. 18 years old. The correct answer is D. 18 years old. You must be at least 18 years of age. You must be either a U.S. citizen or a lawfully admitted alien. Meet TREC's qualifications for honesty, trustworthiness, and integrity. Question 6. What information would be unethical for a listing agent to share with a potential buyer? A. The neighbors next door are really great and have two young children about the age of your kids. B. The community association fees are $800 this year, but they will be going up to $1,200 next year. C. The roof might need to be replaced in the next year or two. D. The seller is very eager for an offer because he lost his job and found a new one in a different state. The correct answer is D. The seller is very eager for an offer because he lost his job and found a new one in a different state. It is inappropriate for a listing agent to tell a prospective buyer personal information about the seller, even if it may encourage a sale. The only exception would be in the case of a seller instructing the agent to do so. Doing so would be a confidentiality breach on the part of the listing agent. The broker should answer all questions related to the property honestly. Question 7. A subdivision has a rule that each home in the neighborhood be at least 2,500 square feet. This is an example of which concept? A. Cooperative ownership. B. Fair housing laws violation. C. Restrictive covenant. D. Homestead laws. The correct answer is C. Restrictive covenant. Restrictive covenants are created by neighborhood developers or associations to ensure that the neighborhood maintains certain standards. Examples include minimum housing size, restrictions on architectural style, or mandated underground sprinkling. Question 8. Which of the following describes a transaction brokerage? A. The broker represents the seller in the transaction. B. The broker represents both the buying and selling parties. C. The broker represents the buyer in the transaction. D. The broker does not represent either party, but provides general information and services to each. The correct answer is... D. The broker does not represent either party, but provides general information and services to each. In a transaction brokerage, the broker may help with general information or services, but she is not looking out for the specific interest of either the buying or selling party. Question 9. Who takes the biggest risk in an open listing? A. The buyer. B. The agent. C. The seller. D. The lending institution. The correct answer is B. The agent. In an open listing, the seller will only pay the agent if the agent finds the buyer. 
Because the seller can have many agents in an open listing, only the agent who finds the buyer will be compensated. This means the agents who do not produce a buyer will receive no compensation. Question 10. An agency contract is being terminated. In which scenario might there be damages owed to one of the parties? A. The owners discharge the agent because she was not acting in their best interest. B. The agency files for bankruptcy. C. The property owner discovers another claim on the title of the house. D. The agent resigns from the contract because he is overloaded with homes to sell. The correct answer is... D. The agent resigns from the contract because he is overloaded with homes to sell. Agents and owners may resign from a sale, but they may be liable for damages due to breach of contract. However, if there is a legally sound reason for resignation, such as the owners requesting the agent do something illegal or the agent not acting in the seller's best interest, there is no penalty for resignation. Being overloaded with homes to sell would not be considered a justifiable reason to end the contract, so the agent may owe the seller some type of damages. Bankruptcy, death, legal incompetence, and multiple claims on the title all automatically terminate the agency relationship by law. Question 11. Foreclosure occurs when a blank seizes and sells a borrower's blank after the borrower has failed to blank the lender. A. Bank, personal property, appreciate. B. Lender, home, alert. C. Lender, collateral, repay. D. Bank, property, notify. The correct answer is C. Lender, collateral, repay. A lender requires collateral for a loan, and if the buyer defaults on the terms of the loan agreement, usually through failure to make payments in a timely manner, the lender can and will seize the collateral, usually the home and or property. Question 12. A buyer agrees to purchase a home once the sale on her current home is completed. Legally, this is known as A. Contingency B. Specific Performance C. Option Agreement D. Negotiation The correct answer is A. Contingency Contingencies or contingency clauses are a part of the contract of sale that allows a buyer or seller to get out of the contract without penalty in the case of certain specified events. Question 13. Mr. and Mrs. Cox make Mr. and Mrs. Green an offer on their home, but they have not heard back from them on whether or not the offer has been accepted. In the meantime, they have found another home they would like to purchase instead. What is their best option? A. Withdraw their offer with penalty. B. Modify their offer to one they are confident Mr. and Mrs. Green will not accept. C. Withdraw their offer with no penalty. D. Wait for Mr. and Mrs. Green's response. If they accept the offer, pay the withdrawal fee outlined in the contract. The correct answer is C. Withdraw their offer with no penalty. Before an offer has been accepted, the buyers have the right to withdraw their offer with no penalty. However, if the seller has already accepted the offer, the offer now becomes a contract that carries with it legal obligations. Question 14. Reversion of title is a feature of what type of interest? A. Fee simple. B. Fee simple condition precedent. C. Fee simple condition subsequent. D. Fee simple determinable. The correct answer is D. Fee simple determinable. You may have been tempted to answer fee simple condition subsequent, which allows the right of reentry, the grantor's right to go to court to reclaim the property. In fee simple determinable, the title reverts back to the grantor if a certain condition isn't met. Question 15. The lumber for a deck that has not yet been built is A. Personal property B. A fixture C. A trade fixture D. Real estate The correct answer is A. Personal property Personal property is tangible, movable, and not permanently attached to real estate. The lumber can become a fixture and therefore real estate, if the deck is built. A trade fixture is something used in conjunction with a business. Question 16. A mortgage is most accurately described as what type of lien? A. Involuntary in general. B. Voluntary in general. C. Voluntary and specific. D. 
involuntary and specific? The correct answer is C. Voluntary and specific. No one can force you into a mortgage agreement, so it's voluntary. And a mortgage applies to only one property, so it's specific. Question 17. Real estate agents will earn their money once a piece of property is A. Financially secure. B. Valued. C. Sold or exchanged. D. Loaned or abetted. The correct answer is C. Sold or exchanged. Once the paperwork is signed for a sale or transfer, the real estate agents earn their pay. Question 18. Blank indicates ownership of property in real estate terms. A. Actuance. B. Title. C. Certified. D. Variance. The correct answer is B. Title. While title indicates ownership, it is not a physical thing. The deed is the physical proof of a title. Question 19. Joan sells her house to her brother Mike on a handshake. This contract is A. Valid only in certain states. B. Illegal. C. Valid because they are related. D. Unenforceable. The correct answer is D. Unenforceable. In order of a contract of sale to be valid, there must be signatures from both parties. Question 20. When ownership of a piece of real estate goes from one person to another, it is called an A. Convitary exchange. B. Exchange. C. Deal. D. Transfer. The correct answer is D. Transfer. Transfer describes the legal exchanges of property between two individuals. Conveying can mean the same as transferred. Question 21. How does a home equity line of credit differ from a second mortgage? A. A home appraisal is not necessary for a home equity line of credit. B. The interest accrued on a home equity line of credit is not tax deductible. C. The terms can be used interchangeably. D. With a home equity line of credit, the borrower can draw money as they need it. The correct answer is D. With a home equity line of credit, the borrower can draw money as they need it. In a traditional second mortgage, a borrower would take all of the money loaned to them at one time. In a home equity line of credit, the borrower may take up to a specified amount, but they do not need to take that amount in full or all at one time. Question 22. What is the primary advantage of a bi-weekly mortgage? A. Easier for budgeting. B. Faster loan payoff. C. They accept those with lower credit scores. D. They offer a better interest rate. The correct answer is B. Faster loan payoff. Because there are 26 two-week periods each year, those with a bi-weekly mortgage will make 13 yearly payments instead of 12. This results in a faster loan payoff, typically between 18 to 22 years. While easier budgeting and a better interest rate may be true in certain mortgage scenarios, the primary advantage of a bi-weekly mortgage is faster loan payoff. Question 23. When a property is released from a mortgage because it has been paid off by the borrower, what document does the lender provide to prove this to be true? A. Land release. B. Estoppel certificate. C. Postponement of lien. D. Satisfaction piece. The correct answer is D. Satisfaction piece. A satisfaction piece is a document from the lender that states the property has been paid off and is released from the lien. Question 24. Which government entity was created to encourage low-income housing? A. FMHA. B. FNMA. Freddie Mac. C. FNMA. Fannie Mae. D. GNMA. Jenny Mae. The correct answer is D. GNMA. Jenny Mae. While all of these are second mortgage markets and Freddie Mac does have multiple low-income housing programs, only Ginny Mae was created to encourage low-income housing. Question 25. A loan for a new house has an origination fee of one point. If the loan is for $275,000, what would the cost of that point be? A. $275. B. $1,375. C. $1,000. D. $2,750. The correct answer is 
D, $2,750. One point is equal to 1% of the total loan amount. If the loan is $275,000, then the amount would be $275,000 times 0 .01 equals $2,750. Question 26. What is the purpose of underwriting? A. To get a current appraisal on a home's value. B. To determine the risks of making a loan. C. To compare the interest rates of different lenders. D. To determine how much a property is worth. The correct answer is B. To determine the risks of making a loan. Mortgage lenders use a process called underwriting to assess the risks of making a loan. To assess a potential borrower's risk, they look at factors such as salary, credit history, and terms of employment. Question 27. If a borrower puts down 10% on their home loan, what is the loan-to-value ratio? A. 20%. B. 90%. C. 80%. D. 10%. The correct answer is B. 90%. If a loan has a 90% loan-to-value ratio, the borrower is responsible for putting down 10%. Most conventional home loans have a loan-to-value ratio of 80%. Question 28. A homeowner is buying a new home but hasn't sold their old one. Which type of loan would they obtain in the short term and pay back as soon as their old house is sold? A. Swing. B. Home equity. C. Wraparound. D. Sale leaseback. The correct answer is A. Swing. A swing loan, also sometimes referred to as a bridge or gap loan, is a short-term loan that allows borrowers to borrow against their current property in order to buy a new one. They are typically taken out when the borrower wants to buy a bigger home but hasn't sold their current property. Question 9. Which is not one of the three C's of underwriting? A. Credit. B. Capacity. C. Collateral. D. Conformity. The correct answer is D. Conformity. Capacity is the cash reserve and debt ratio of the borrower. Collateral includes their down payment and property types. Credit includes their credit score and accounts. Conformity is not one of the three C's of underwriting. Question 30. Who is the typical reverse mortgage customer? A. All of these. B. Someone with a lot of equity in their home. C. Someone without a lot of liquid capital. D. Someone elderly. The correct answer is A. All of these. In a reverse mortgage, the lender gives money to the borrower using the home itself as collateral. The loan typically does not require repayment until death or until the homeowner moves out. Reverse mortgages are popular options for those with all three of these attributes, elderly and who are house-rich and cash-poor, meaning they have a lot of equity in their home, but not a lot of liquid cash. Question 31. The American with Disabilities Act of 1990 would affect which of the following? A. A third-floor apartment in a newly constructed apartment complex. B. An existing business with 20 employees. C. A single-family home. D multifamily home with three units? The correct answer is B, an existing business with 20 employees. The Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, of 1990 seeks to accommodate those with disabilities by broadening their access to public facilities. Any existing business with 15 or more employees must update their facility to conform with ADA rules and regulations. Almost all new construction with the exception of single-family homes, must be handicapped accessible. While newly constructed ground floor apartments are subject to ADA regulations, those on higher levels are not. As of 1988, multifamily buildings with four or more units must comply with ADA standards. Question 32. A real estate agent declines to show a Muslim couple a house in a neighborhood because she feels the area isn't Muslim-friendly. This is known as what? A. Good faith exception. B. Redlining. C. Steering. D. Blockbusting. The correct answer is C. Steering. Steering is the act of directing or not directing clients to a certain area based on race, religion, sex, familial status, national origin, or handicap. While the agent may believe she is acting benevolently by directing her buyers to an area they will be comfortable, this practice is a violation of the federal 
Fair Housing Act. Question 33. According to HUD standards, which of the following would be an acceptable neighborhood advertisement? A. Traditional living. B. Exclusive neighborhood. C. Muslim friendly. D. Senior housing. The correct answer is D. Senior housing. Housing intended to serve those 55 and older is acceptable according to HUD standards. Words indicative of race, religion, color, familial status, sex, handicap, or national origin are not acceptable, nor are words that would be considered discriminatory such as exclusive, restrictive, traditional, or board approved. Question 34. What is the main purpose of Regulation Z? A. To let borrowers know the true cost of credit. B. To lock the borrower into a mortgage once the paperwork is signed. C. To set a minimum interest rate. D. To limit the amount consumers can be charged. The correct answer is A. To let borrowers know the true cost of credit. Regulation Z states the annual percentage rate, or APR, cost of credit, must be disclosed when borrowers apply for credit. Regulation Z, also called the Truth in Lending Act, does not set a minimum or maximum interest rate. Question 35. Which of the following would not be considered a finance charge? A. Interest. B. Seller's points. C. Finder's fees. D. Appraisal fees. The correct answer is B. Seller's points. A finance charge is any charge made by the lender of credit that the borrower is directly or indirectly required to pay. The borrower is not responsible to pay the seller's points, but is responsible for items such as finder's fees, appraisal fees, and interest. Question 36. When real estate agents represent the buyer and not the seller of a piece of property, they are engaging in A. Buyer protection B. Buyer agency C. Seller protection D. Good faith. The correct answer is B. Buyer agency. Agency is the term for representation in a real estate transaction. The principal, in this case the buyer, gives legal authority to an agent to act on the principal's behalf when dealing with a third party. Question 37. If you are representing both the buyer and the seller of a piece of real estate, it's called A. Double representation B. Dual agency C. Dual real estate. D. Double agency. The correct answer is B. Dual agency. While dual agency is not legal in all states, in some states a real estate agent is allowed to represent both the buyer and seller of a piece of real estate. Dual agency is sometimes referred to as limited agency. Question 38. In a blank, the real estate agent represents only the buyer or the seller of a piece of property. A. Combined Agency Relationship B. Limited Agency Relationship C. Split Agency Relationship D. Single Agency Relationship The correct answer is D. Single Agency Relationship In a single agency relationship, a real estate agent is hired by either the buyer or the seller and must keep that party's best interest in mind. Question 39. Blank is when an individual can be paid for brokering a real estate transaction, yet represent neither the buyer nor the seller. A. Situational brokerage. B. Transactional brokerage. C. Divisional brokerage. D. Individual brokerage. The correct answer is B. Transactional brokerage. Transactional brokerage is only legal in some states and care must be taken to see what the duties and responsibilities are for the agents brokering a deal if they are not representing either side of the deal. Question 40. Some states have blank that require agents to disclose who they are representing to the buyers. A. Agent identification clauses. B. Agency disclosure laws. C. Agency branding laws. D. Agent identification laws. The correct answer is B. Agency Disclosure Laws Agency Disclosure Laws help clear up confusion over whose interests are being represented in a transaction. These laws are in place to protect buyers from being misled by agents who are actually representing the sellers. Question 41. When a person or entity uses the land of another for a specific purpose, it is known as an A. Easement B. Literal Right C. Restrictive Covenant D. Lien the correct answer is 
A. Easement The most common types of easements are access, utility, and drainage easements. Question 42. Which of the following is not considered realty? A. A growing tree. B. Bricks mortared together in a wall. C. Lumber. D. Land. The correct answer is... C. Lumber. Realty is defined as land and everything permanently attached to it. Bricks mortared together in a wall are considered permanently attached to the land, whereas free lumber is not as it could easily be moved. Question 43. Mr. Smith has died. By what rights does his wife lay claim to his property? A. Tenancy in common. B. Dower. C. Courtesy. D. Eminent domain. The correct answer is... B. Dower. Dower rights grant a wife or child interest in her husband's estate. Curtsy laws recognize the rights of a husband in the event of his wife's death. Question 44. A person has been using another person's land for 30 years without permission. They may have a legal claim to the land by which means of ownership. A. Involuntary alienation. B. Voluntary alienation. C. They do not have a legal claim to the land. D. Adverse Possession. The correct answer is... D. Adverse Possession. Adverse Possession Laws are very old laws found in every state. The idea behind this type of possession is that if the true owner is so disinterested in the land they own that they allow someone else to use it for a long period of time, depending on the state, 7 to 40 years, the person using it has rights based on the fact they were treating the property as their own. Question 45. A condominium is legally defined as A. A community in which the architectural style makes the homes look uniform and neat in appearance. B. An association with dues used to maintain community property, including swimming pools, park areas, and parking lots. C. A community where the owner owns a portion of the shares of stock of the cooperative corporation. D. A community where homeowners have the title to one piece of individual property and the right to use community property shared with others. The correct answer is... D. A community where homeowners have the title to one piece of individual property and the right to use community property shared with others. Condominium is a legal term that describes land ownership. In a condominium, a person has a title and exclusive ownership to a piece of property, typically a house or unit and shared access to other community areas. This may include parks, pool areas, and parking lots. But these areas do not define what a condo is, nor are condominiums required to have these structures. A community where the owner owns a portion of shares of stock is called a cooperative. Question 46. A stream and large rock are referenced in a property description. Which type of land description would this be considered? A. Lot and block. B. Governmental survey. C. Rectangular Survey. D. Mets and Bounds. The correct answer is... D. Mets and Bounds. Monuments and occupancy markers are sometimes used in Mets and Bounds property descriptions. Monuments include both natural and man-made items like large trees, rocks, or fences. Occupancy descriptions include more vague-owned properties such as Carlson's Farm. Governmental Survey is just another term for Rectangular Survey. Question 47. Rectangular survey is used in many states as a way to evenly divide property into six even square mile areas. What are these areas called? A. Counties. B. Villages. C. Cities. D. Townships. The correct answer is... D. Townships. The divisions created in rectangular survey property descriptions are called townships. Question 48. Which of these would determine if there is encroachment on a property? A. Survey. B. Easement. C. Ejectment. D. Appraisal. The correct answer is... A. Survey. A survey determines if one's building or property encroaches, trespasses, on another's. A survey is typically part of a real estate contract. Question 49. What is meant by riparian rights? A. The former property owner still lives at the property, but it has officially been sold. B. There is no legal owner to the land, so the property becomes possession of the government. C. The property owner has property that borders a moving body of water. D. The property was given to the current owner by a deceased family member. The correct answer is... C. 
the property owner has property that borders a moving body of water. If a property owner has riparian rights, their property borders a moving body of water such as a river or stream. Typically, a property owner with riparian rights cannot meddle with the natural flow of the water touching their property. Question 50. Which document outlines the environmental effects that are caused by new development? A. Environmental Development Report B. Environmental Impact Report C. Environmental Project Report D. Environmental Risk Report The correct answer is B. Environmental Impact Report The Environmental Impact Report statement describes the likely environmental effects a new development will have. The document is sometimes required by local governmental agencies before new construction is started. Question 51. What is the objective of most appraisals? A. Determining investment value of a property. B. Determining insurance value of a property. C. Determining market value of a property. D. Determining loan value of a property. The correct answer is... C. Determining market value of a property. Although an appraiser may be used to evaluate any of these, they typically are sought to determine the market value of a property. Question 52. Market value is different from market price in that market price blank. A. Is taxable and market value is not. B. Is a fact that has actually occurred. C. Is not an actual value, but just an idea. D. Is always 10% below market value. The correct answer is B is a fact that has actually occurred. Market value is just an estimate of what a property should sell for in the current market. Market price is what it did sell for. The other answer choices are not true. Question 52. Market value is different from market price in that market price A is taxable and market value is not. B is a fact that has actually occurred. C is not an actual value, but just an idea. D is always 10% below market value. The correct answer is... B is a fact that has actually occurred. Market value is just an estimate of what a property should sell for in the current market. Market price is what it did sell for. The other answer choices are not true. Question 53. The sales comparison approach to valuation is directly related to... A. Market investment return rates. B. All pending, canceled, and short sale listings. C. The quality and amount of sales data available. D. The principle of anticipation. The correct answer is... C. The quality and amount of sales data available. The sales comparison, sometimes still referred to as market, approach to valuation involves an appraiser locating similar properties to the property being appraised. When there are more homes on the market, it is easier for the appraiser to find similar properties and to make valuation adjustments as appropriate. Question 54. Which of the following is not a typical obligation of the mortgager? A. Maintain the property. B. Keep a hazard insurance policy in force. C. Get permission for alterations. D. Advise the mortgagee of a change in the escrow account balance. The correct answer is... D. Advise the mortgagee of a change in the escrow account balance. This question requires you to know who the mortgager, borrower, and mortgagee, lender, are. The first three answers relate to the borrower's duties. The mortgagee does the advising about the escrow account balance. The borrower contributes money to the escrow account only according to the lender's accounting of what it needs. Question 55. Interest paid on the accrued interest as well as the principal is called A. Compensating interest. B. Simple interest. C. Exponential interest. D. Compound interest. The correct answer is D. Compound interest. While simple interest is paid only to the principal owed, when accrued interest is added in or included, the interest is compounding. Question 56. Of these individuals, who can perform an appraisal? A. All of these. B. Real estate broker. C. Real estate agent. D. Real estate appraiser. The correct answer is D. Real estate appraiser. A real estate agent or broker cannot prepare an official property appraisal. Instead, they can prepare a comparative market analysis, CMA, or broker's opinion of value, BOV. 
Question 57. How is land different than other property assets? A. Its value is not tied to nearby housing values. B. It cannot decline in value. C. It retains its value better than other property assets. D. It is fixed and immobile. The correct answer is... D. It is fixed and immobile. Land is the only property asset that is fixed and immobile. Like other properties, land can decrease or increase in value as surroundings become more or less desirable, even though it cannot depreciate in an accounting sense. The other options are all not true or not unique to land. Question 58. You may need to know the value of the house you inherited. A. For income tax purposes. B. For real valuation purposes. C. For appraisal tax purposes. D. For estate tax purposes. The correct answer is... D. For estate tax purposes. Estate taxes are based on the appraisal of a particular piece of property. Question 59. An appraisal is... A. An exact value of a particular piece of property. B. An estimated value of a particular piece of property. C. The investment value of a particular piece of property. D. A predetermined value of a particular piece of property. The correct answer is... B. An estimated value of a particular piece of property. Appraisers do use a variety of mathematical techniques in their work, but the act of arriving at the value of a particular piece of property is not precise. Question 60. When estimating the value for a particular piece of property... An appraiser will not investigate a. Environmental factors b. Social factors c. Physical factors d. Future factors The correct answer is d. Future factors An appraiser will investigate economic, environmental, physical, and social factors when estimating the value for a particular piece of property. Thank you for watching this video and please don't forget to share it with your friends. Check out these other videos that could be helpful too. Good luck in your real estate journey.